Okay. Looks like I may actually have a decent signal this time. Uh, I tried this last night and had a poor connection, which gave me something like 240p on my video. This looks like it should hopefully at least be 480, if not 720 or 1080. Um, what I did last night was look at Gettysburg maps, uh, and that was just kind of as I was testing this new live streaming app. Um, I've never actually live streamed anything before, so I wanted to give it a try, and I thought I'd do something easy as opposed to trying to do an actual game playthrough. Um, I opted instead just to ramble on about maps, uh, and I might do some more of that tonight because I'm not going to do too long of a stream. I mostly just wanted to see if this worked. Um, but it kind of talking about the Gettysburg maps last night got me looking at my shelves uh, to determine how many Gettysburg games I actually had, because uh, I am a huge Civil War buff, but have never uh, gone out of my way to collect Gettysburg titles. Um, I always was kind of more interested in some of the more obscure battles of the Civil War, some of the battles that aren't gamed as often. Um, my, my particular interest is in the wilderness. That's always been uh, one of the battles I've been most interested in the first meeting between Lee and Grant, um, and just kind of this horrible battle fought in this awful terrain. Uh, but this dramatic meeting engagement all the same, people tend to lump in the wilderness with things like Spotsylvania and Cold Harbor and uh, the other kind of static front fights in the Overland campaign. But the wilderness was actually a meeting engagement, and it was actually lots of... It was a very swingy battle. Uh, lots of people... Lots of enemies uh, flying back and forth, last-minute rescues, uh, and that sort of thing. So that's one of the reasons the wilderness always appealed to me. So I hadn't actually gone out of my way to get very many Gettysburg titles. Um, when I was a kid in high school, I bought the old Avalon Hill game, Devil's Den. Uh, and that was more because I'd just seen the movie Gettysburg, which, of course, lionized... Um, this is uh, Terrible Swift Sword, second edition, the TSR version, um, hence pink and green. That's uh, pretty much what Terrible Swift Sword TSR edition is, <laughs> just a mess of pink and green, and the graphics really aren't that great to boot. Um, I actually have this laid out. Um, under the plexi now, because it is going to be the next title that I play as soon as I get done trimming all of these side nibs off of the counters. Um, unfortunately, that's another terrible part of TSR's SPI titles, is they are all side-mounted, which means they take forever to uh, trim off all those side nibs with a rotary cutter. But uh, anyway, um, getting back to my comment about Devil's Den, which was one of the first Gettysburg games I ever played, but the main reason I bought that was because I had just seen the movie Gettysburg. This was, what, 1992, I think, um, and uh, was, of course, interested in Little Round Top and uh, the defense of that wing of the Union Army, so I ended up um, getting a copy of that game and playing it, and that was almost like a company-level type you know, it's a very small-scale tactical view of just that part of the battlefield. So I had never played any great... Um, I'd never played any great, uh, like, overall grand tactical battles of Gettysburg, uh, at least not on the tabletop. I played, of course, Sid Meier's Gettysburg, the, the PC game, which also came out, I want to say, when I was in... like, in the early, early to mid-'90s when I was in high school. Um... Maybe the mid-90s. I might have been in college when it came out. I don't remember. Mid-90s is what I remember. But uh, I played the hell out of that, and uh, uh, but didn't get into tabletop wargaming of Gettysburg until I got back into wargaming uh, around about 2012. Um, so going through my shelves, uh, I had a couple of titles. I don't have any magazine titles. Um, there's Three Days of Gettysburg. I just recently got Clash of Giants Civil War, which covers Gettysburg. Uh, I had the Guns of Gettysburg, 
Summer Storm uh, with Rick Barber's awesome maps, Thunder at the Crossroads, the Civil War Brigade series, and uh, Last Chance for Victory, which is the most recent uh, line of battle title from the gamers, uh, kind of a re-implementation of their old RSS title, This Hallowed Ground. Um, although, in his designer notes for Last Chance for Victory, uh, Dean Essig said uh, that you should still check out This Hallowed Ground because that's Dave Powell's vision of the battle, whereas Last Chance for Victory is more specifically Dean Essig's vision of the battle. So, um, maybe reason to, to eventually look up a copy of This Hallowed Ground. Uh, it used to be pretty expensive. I think it's prices might have gone down a little bit since Last Chance for Victory was released. Um, something I touched on last night was uh, that you can use uh, Rick Barber's awesome maps for Summer Storm uh, with Thunder at the Crossroads because they're at the same scale. Uh, something that I just recently tried, playing the Culp's Hill and Cemetery Hill scenarios on the Summer Storm maps, and it worked pretty well, uh, except you kind of have to wing it when you determine where you're actually placing your troops on the map. Uh, maybe somebody's done a conversion chart for that. Uh, I couldn't find one, so I just laid out the actual Thunder at the Crossroads map, found the hexes, then found the nearest equivalent hexes on the Summer Storm maps, and put placed the units accordingly. Uh, but yes, here we are looking at um, the TSR, Terrible Swift Sword map, and it is indeed hideous. Uh, this I, I talked about this at length last night. Uh, one of the viewers was commenting that it was a case of color theory, i.e. Uh, the, the idea that high contrasting colors are easier to tell apart, uh, trumping um, graphic design or aesthetics for that matter. Uh, so, you know, the idea being that, well, pink and green are very um, clashing colors, and so if you use those two, it, be, it, it makes it easier to tell where your elevation changes are. Well, yeah, maybe between the pink and the green, but, you know, here they're just using various shades of pink. So, you know, does that really help? It doesn't seem like it. Um, so... You know, this map ends up being kind of a disaster uh, from a graphical standpoint. I'll be curious to see how it plays, uh, how the terrain actually works. Uh, you know, as far as I understand Gettysburg, um, you know, do these changes here for Cemetery Hill um, create enough of a difficulty for any rebel units trying to assault Cemetery Hill, which, as we know, historically was one of the strongest positions on the field. So, because it was a, a, a what they call a perfect artillery position where uh, it was a flat, sort of plateau-type hill where you could place a lot of guns um, in an elevated position with a commanding field of fire. Uh, as, um, as, uh, was it was it Buford or Howard? It was one of those two generals, maybe Howard, who said it's it's not uh, the best position on the field. It's the only position on the field uh, for, in terms of, of maybe it was Henry Hunt who might have actually said that, the Union Chief of Artillery. But it's an artillerist's dream position, and so it was just the natural place for the Union troops to fall back to once they uh, once they fled through the town and couldn't hold north of the town. Um, so we shall see uh, once I actually start playing uh, how that will play out. Again, I haven't, haven't actually read through all the rules for TSS yet, um, but we'll, uh, I've started on them and uh, should be getting through them in the next couple of days. Hopefully I'll have the counters done in the next couple of days as well. Uh, let's take a look at something I didn't do last night. Well, first of all, I laid, you might have seen um, Rebel Sabres here laying there with uh, the other Gettysburg titles. I threw that in there because you can actually, there's a there's a, a an extension that you can add to this side of the map that has the Eastern Cavalry Field uh, where the cavalry battle on the third day, either the second day or the third day, uh, occurred. Um, where Jeb Stewart was supposed to try and get around behind the Union Army and wreak havoc in their rear and was really unable to do so. Um, but uh, let's take a look at the Summer Storm map. This is Rick Barber's 
maps for get the right ones here for Gettysburg for his game Summer Storm. I actually used, as I said, I used these maps for um, his layout in a different way, a slightly different orientation. Um, but I use these maps for Thunder at the Crossroads. I can try and actually let me lay these a different orientation so we can look at the key terrain up close with the camera. So here we've got a look at this is roughly the same position, and you can see here this is just a much more aesthetically pleasing map in terms of um, just the artwork itself, like the actual you know the buildings are drawn in. Um, you've got little details on all the farms. Uh, you know, more little individual buildings. Um, there's a lot more little labels on things. Uh, Rick Barber lives, I don't know if he lives in Gettysburg, he lives near Gettysburg, and so is is fairly intimately familiar with the battlefield. Um, so, you know, he's even got little nicknames, the Ripple there on McPherson's Ridge. Uh, which is probably the what, what they're referring to, um, maybe the the undulation between the road and the railroad cut there. Uh, but just overall, a, a much more interesting map. Uh, from my understanding, more accurate as well. Uh, I believe Dave Powell himself, who designed Thunder at the Crossroads, said you should use Rick Barber's Gettysburg map uh, because it is more accurate than the Thunder at the Crossroads Gettysburg map. So uh, that was what I did also because I couldn't figure out how to actually play Rick Barber's Summer Storm system. <laughs> as much as I really want to, it continues to elude me. I've tried twice now, and uh, I'm going to have to have a friend of mine who knows how to play the game actually just teach it to me. That will probably make things make things go easier. So as you can see here, uh, we've got Cemetery Hill which looks on this map much more three-dimensional, much more like an actual hill that you would have to charge up um, with, you know, a, a fairly steep slope lines here. So, you know, in something like Thunder at the Crossroads and the CWB system, this gives you a column shift trying to fire up this. Uh, I don't believe there's any morale shift for being at the top of a steep slope, but... Uh, my I, my recollection is that this gives you a, a column shift on the firing table. So uh, you can see here, it looks like, you know, the, the highest portions look like a narrower, a bit narrower space uh, than what we saw on the TSS map. Um, the scales are going to be different, though, too, because this is going to be a brigade, a brigade level map as opposed to a regimental. So over here, you've got the heavily forested Culps Hill with, again, very, very steep slopes, and I, you know, I've been to Gettysburg three times, and I've walked around Culp's Hill. Uh, last time I was there, I took particular interest in studying the ground around Culp's Hill, and it is, I mean, this is how guys even fought along this side of the hill, I don't even know, because it's just, you know, steep, rocky, heavily forested slope, so uh, just trying to fight, and let alone fight in the dark, which is where a lot of the fighting at Culp's Hill happened in the dark. Uh, it just seems crazy to me. Um, so that's this end of the line. Yeah, uh, Jay, I'll just call you Jay, uh, as opposed to trying to actually pronounce your username. Um, it, it's, I don't know if it's the, uh, maybe on the camera, it looks colder uh, in terms of color scheme. It is very green. Uh, there's a lot of green. Uh, the overall look of the map, you know, when you have it laid out on the table, is heavily green with these spots of brown uh, for for the the tops of the hills. We can move down here. Um, 
to Big Round Top and Little Round Top. And uh, a comment that I made last night in uh, when I was looking at the uh, Three Days of Gettysburg map was that they had actually drawn in a lot of rocks in here along Plum Run and near the Devil's Den. Uh, it made sense near the Devil's Den, but I hadn't seen many maps that did rocks all along the Valley of Death here. Uh, but this one does. You can see there's a lot of rocks drawn in on the terrain around Little Round Top and Big Round Top, and there's Devil's Den there uh, where the rocks are even larger. Um, so, but, but I think you were thinking what looks wintry, you know, is this lighter colored stuff. It's still very green um, when you see it in person, so uh, it may look cooler just based on the lighting. I've got uh, spotlights that are aimed directly down uh, onto the table overhead, so that may contribute a little bit to the to the cooler look um, of the of the colors on camera. Um, so just as you can see here, a much more lovely map to look at uh, by comparison to the TSS map, uh, just in terms of, not just in terms of color, but obviously also in terms of graphics and overall design. Uh, let's take a look at the Thunder at the Crossroads map. And you can see what I was talking about with this, this map last night. Um, about how in the earlier, well actually I think all the gamers Civil War Brigade series titles, uh, all of them are, the uh, elevation changes on all those maps are fixed to the hex grid. So elevation changes as opposed to having multiple elevation changes per hex, each hex is a specific elevation. And that was something that Dean Essig specifically did away with um, in, I can get the overlap right on this, specifically did away with for line of battle. He, he made the hex grid and line of battle independent of the uh, hex grid. So well, this isn't quite matching up, but so as you can see here, that hex bound elevation style leaves you with a very spl what I call splotchy looking map. Uh, also, not the greatest. Like using red for the highest points also gives it this sort of weird splotchiness. Um, I probably would have gone just with more shades of brown. But, you know, I don't know what the print limitations were at the time this came out, which uh, I want to say was the early 90s. So, uh, so a much, much different looking map. And again, this is roughly the same. This one is roughly the same scale as the Rick Barber map we just looked at. So, but you can see just in terms of graphics, it's a much more stark looking, technical looking map than Barber's map, which is much more illustrative. Um, you can take a look here, Cemetery Hill. Again, this is your key terrain. And, you know, compared to Rick Barber's map, it has a much different, like, profile of Rick Barber's Cemetery Hill looked a bit narrower. The, the highest peak portion of it looked a bit narrower. Kind of extended a little further north here, I think. Um, and then Culp's Hill, you know, looked much more imposing uh, here, it just looks like a couple of high hexes. The woods on this particular map, I don't care for the, the style of woods. It's very um, muted, I guess you could say. It just It's, the, it's a, a very light illustration, and then it's, you know, I understand why it needs to be muted so you can see those elevation changes through it. Um, but it's almost, you almost can't, don't see it, you know, unless you're looking close, you're like, oh, hey, this is woods <laughs> filling in here. So if you look over here, then you've got big round top, little round top. Again, you know, the red and the brown there overpowers any sense of trees. Uh, you know, these, these hills from just looking at them through the camera almost look totally bare <laughs> uh, until you zoom up close and realize, well, big round top is in fact actually covered with trees. And then there's one hex and one and a half hexes of, of little round top that are, that are actually bare. So 
and no illustrations of boulders in here. It's just clear. Devil's Den has a little terrain thing around it. Um, I don't know on the terrain key what that's described as. I guess it's just a slope. So these are like slope hex sides around Devil's Den. Um, so the rocks themselves aren't really shown there on the map. But just an overall much different looking play experience on here than you would get on on the Summer Storm map, uh, which is why I used it. You know, and I've played other Civil War Brigade series titles, uh, and, and uh, you know they play on the maps just fine. But I think if you have an uh, opportunity to use the great Civil War Brigade series system with a beautiful map like Summer Storm has, uh, it's it's worth taking that opportunity if you have it. So. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll ever play anything on the Thunder at the Crossroads map again um, after having been spoiled on the Summer Storm map. So uh, that is a look at, I guess, all the maps that I didn't look at yesterday. Uh, the Clash of Giants Civil War map is actually over on a different table. Um, and is that one's at a much more, at a much different scale. Let me move the camera over here. I can actually take a look if I've got enough lighting over on this side of the room or too much glare maybe um, get this out of the way obviously here you're dealing with I forget if this is a brigade level game or more of a division level uh, just looking at the and I think it is brigade level but it's a single map, and this is something I was talking about last night, which was how uh, different types of Gettysburg games handle the railroad cut in terms of scale. It's something very difficult to, to display in terms of scale, but you can see here, like the unfinished railroad, let me grab the tweeters. You can see here on the unfinished railroad, on this map, so the unfinished railroad goes through here, and presumably these terrain features represent the railroad cut. Well, the railroad cut was in no way that large. Um, you know, it went through like a portion of these hexes at this scale. Like it, you know, maybe a little bit here and a little bit here was where the actual cut was. The rest of it was just an unfinished railroad bed. So this this seems to me at the scale of this, you know, when you look at how like the town is, you know, just this group of hexes here. Cemetery Hill is basically two hexes right here. Same thing, then you get down to Little Round Top and Big Round Top. Same thing, just a couple of hexes. You know, the scale is much more compact, so there's no way the rail, the, the railroad cut, as it were, should be, you know, six hexes worth on a map this scale. So. I'll be curious to see how that actually plays um, once I start playing this. As you can see, I've got it set up for the opening day. I have not actually started playing it. It's not a very complicated system. It's only, what, like 10 pages of rules, if that. Yeah, it's about 10 pages. So it should be pretty, pretty easy to get started and uh, get playing. So um, over here is another example of a uh, Civil War Brigade series map. This is April's Harvest, which I'm in the middle of about the 10.30 a.m. turn. But this you can see here is an example of like total color explosion, um, even more so than uh, the splotchy look that the, the Thunder at the Crossroads map has with this just deep, deep red color into orange. Um, and this is not particularly steep terrain here, so I'm not sure what elevation this is actually at. I've been to the Shiloh battlefield, and it did not seem like, you know, the portions of the battlefield from where the Confederates launched their attack were way up in the hills or something, so uh, I'm not sure why the radical color use for what's really a fairly low-lying battlefield, but that's what you get, a, a pretty, pretty almost cartoonish, cartoonishly garish, maybe, look at... Uh, the Shiloh battlefield but you know again like uh, all the brigade series games I've played it's a very well done well thought out battle um, the terrain is well represented even if some of the color choices are a little 
on the freaky side. So, all right, I think I've gone through all the maps that I have for Gettysburg um, you know, last night. Well, I guess I didn't do the guns of Gettysburg, but that is a mounted board and probably the most muted of all the maps of Gettysburg. Might as well get it out, right? Let's do all of them. And, of course, I can never figure out how to unfold the board when I get this out. But this one is all just total green. But it looks much more like, um, like kind of like the Last Chance for Victory map. looks almost like a professional survey cartography style map. Um, with terrain features and elevations and so forth, very muted um, and not using particularly high contrast colors to distinguish between different elevations. So we're looking at the different elevation here. And this is also area control as opposed to hex based. Uh, which contributes also to the to the different look of the map. It's a very elegant, um, fairly beautiful map, but not particularly visually striking. Um, but here, here you get Cemetery Hill as one of the key points uh, of defense. It's kind of like one, two, three, four, five. There's basically five sectors covering uh, Cemetery Hill there. So. Uh, and the railroad cut here, because it's area control, is less less of a big deal. Um, I'm just looking here. There's the unfinished railroad, but no particular terrain, um, you know, delineating how the railroad cut would have an effect on play. I don't recall reading um, how the the railroad cut had an effect on play before. Um, I've played this once and not to completion, so uh, if you look down here at Big Round Top and Little Round Top, again, Big Round Top pretty well represented as the giant forested hill that it is. Little Round Top, you've got woods here, and then it's clearly um, not forested on that, that open face. So this also, the Guns of Gettysburg also has just more of a period look to it. Um, even though I think the, the map, the, the graphic features used to show the map are fairly modern, um, the overall effect is definitely more, definitely more period feel than what, say, Thunder at the Crossroads or Terrible Swift Sword has. Um, I think Summer Storm has a very good, very good period feel. Uh, anyway, that is the last of my Gettysburg maps I have to look at, so, uh, I think that's my last video. Um, on the Gettysburg maps. Um, just to answer, uh, Jordan, looks like you're not watching anymore, but uh, just to answer your last question there, um, I did give my opinion on Last Chance for Victory. I think it's a fantastic map. It has maybe a, a few too many elevation changes in it for my liking. I think there's 15 elevation changes. But it is uh, a, a gorgeous map, a, a, an excellent, very technical map for playing the Battle of Gettysburg on. Uh, I think all the terrain is very well represented um, however, it, it, it gets a zero for me for period feel, uh, and really all the gamers' maps do. The gamers have never, you know, all, all their maps have always used the same font, whether it's a World War II map or, or a Civil War map. There's just absolutely zero attempt to make any period, to, to evoke any period feel on their maps at all, which, you know, that's fine. Uh, that, that's Some people don't care about that stuff at all though they just want the game to play well and certainly the gamers uh, line of battle can make that claim uh, it's probably the best regimental level civil war system i've played so i don't expect it i don't expect my playthrough of the tsr version of terrible swiss sword to to overtake um my estimation of uh last chance for victory so uh, anyway, I guess you are still there, Jordan. It's showing zero view viewers on my little app, so um, I don't know who, how many people may actually be watching. So, um, But uh, thanks for, for sticking with it. Um, you know, Obviously, this will be posted so people can watch it after the fact. 
Um, but I, I wanted to try doing the live streaming um, just so people could make, make uh, real-time comments um, as I was working through it. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I've looks like I've figured out my bandwidth problem, so uh, I should be doing more of these live streaming videos uh, in the future. See ya.